Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own Arduino based obstacle avoiding robot car. The car uses an ultrasonic sensor to detect objects and a DC motor driver shield to drive four motors, one for each wheel. I've put purchase links for the components required in the video description. The DC motor driver shield is used to drive the four geared DC motors using two L293D chips and a shift register. You'll need to add some additional pin headers for the power and two digital I.O. pins to control the ultrasonic sensor. The ultrasonic sensor uses ultrasonic sound waves to measure the distance to an object by timing how long it takes the pulse to bounce off the object and return to the sensor. Each of the four wheels is driven by a geared DC motor. You may need to attach a short power lead to each with some pins to screw into the terminals on the motor shield. I designed a simple chassis for the car to be 3D printed. I printed mine using black PLA. There are three printed components, the top and bottom chassis sections, and then a holder for the ultrasonic sensor. Let's start by assembling the car. All of the components are glued into place using a glue gun. Start off by gluing the servo into place with the ribbon cable facing towards the back of the car. Next glue the ultrasonic sensor into the housing, making sure that there's some space around the pins for the plug connectors. And glue the servo arm into the bottom of the holder. Then push the sensor onto the servo. Next let's glue the motors into place. Try keep the wiring to the motors on the outside so that you can get to them if any come loose. Don't worry about the directions of the motors. This can be changed by swapping the wires at the shield terminals later. Glue each motor into place on the bottom chassis plate. If you're going to be using a rechargeable battery, put the battery into place in the middle section between the motors to free up some space on the top chassis plate. Put a drop of glue onto the top of each motor and then screw the top chassis plate into place. Next, screw your Arduino into the top chassis plate. Plug your motor driver shield into your Arduino. Now screw your motors into each terminal pair. Make sure that each motor is connected to the correct pair of terminals. The front motors to the front terminals and the back motors to the back terminals. Don't worry about the polarity of the motors yet. If any turn the wrong way around when you power the car up, then simply swap the two wires for the motor around and it'll then turn the correct way. Put a drop of glue on the sides of the car to hold the wires away from the wheels, so that they don't get caught up in the wheels when they are turning. Plug the servo into the servo 1 header pins on the shield, with the signal wire facing inwards. Feed a power cable for your battery in under the board into the power terminals. If you're not using a rechargeable battery, then place the battery pack into the space between the servo and the Arduino, making sure that it doesn't get caught on the sensor when it moves. Then plug the four wires into the sensor and over to the shield. Plug the ground and VCC wires into the ground and 5 volt pins on the shield. 
and then the trigger pin to pin 2 and the echo pin to pin 13. Lastly, put the four wheels onto the geared motors and the car is now complete. Let's have a look at the code. We start by importing two libraries, one to control the motor shield and one to control the servo. We then create an object for each motor and one for the servo. We then define the ultrasonic sensor pins and create variables for the maximum sensing distance, the distance before an object is stopped, and to calculate the timeout time to stop the sensor from waiting if an object is further than the maximum sensing distance. We then create variables for the motor speed as well as one to compensate for one side's motors being slightly more powerful and causing the car to slowly turn while driving. We then create a variable for the amount of speed to add to each motor when turning to give the car more turning power as the motors are working against each other to rotate the car. In the setup function, we set the motor speed to the defined motor speed, then disable all of the motors to make sure that they're off, then assign the servo and ultrasonic sensor pin numbers. In the loop function, we turn the servo to look straight ahead, then wait for the servo to turn. We then call a function called getDistance to measure the distance of an object in front of the sensor. If no object is within the stopping distance, then we start the motors to drive the car forward. We then continually measure the distance to objects in front of the car every 250 milliseconds until an object is within the stopping distance. We then stop the motors and call a function called checkDirection to decide whether to turn left, turn right or turn around. A switch statement then calls the correct method to turn the car. Because we don't have any movement sensors on the wheels, we have to turn the car for a certain amount of time before we know that it has turned 90 or 180 degrees. Now let's have a look at the movement and sensing functions. I've created an acceleration and deceleration function which ramp up and down the motor speeds. I haven't used these in this version of the code, but they may be useful for future projects. We then have two functions to set all of the motors to turn in the forward direction and to stop, and then another two to turn left and turn right. The turn left and turn right functions turn the wheels on opposite sides of the car in opposite directions, so the car can turn around on the spot without needing any forward movement or a steering mechanism. We then have the two sensing functions. The first is to measure the distance to an object which uses the ultrasonic sensor to send a 10 microsecond pulse out and then time how long it takes to return. We can use this time to calculate how far the object is away from the car. The second function uses the first and turns the ultrasonic sensor to the left and then to the right, taking measurements in each direction. These measurements are then compared in order to decide whether to turn left or right. The car will always turn towards the direction with more space. If both sides have less space than the stopping distance, then the car will turn around and drive back the way it came. Let's upload the code and see how the car goes. Remember to check your wheel rotation directions when you first run the code. All of the wheels should be turning in the forward direction when the car first moves. If any turn in the wrong direction, swap the motor leads around in the terminals to change the motor direction. Also check that the server moves left first and then right. On some servers, the signal direction is reversed, which will cause the robot car to turn towards the closest object rather than away from it. The robot car runs well both on carpeted and tiled surfaces, as all four wheels are driven. If the car runs into a tight space, it'll turn around and drive back out the way it came. In future I'll be adding more movement to the ultrasonic sensor during forward movement. This will be to detect objects slightly off center, which may come into the robot's path, and then gently turn the robot car away from them.
Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.